going to be going over a program I wrote to make machine learning predictions for the 2020 fantasy football season. The data source for this is Pro Football Reference, and it's just the yards from scrimmage table that they published for 2019. And if you look, there's all these players sorted by how many yards from scrimmage they got, with Christian McCaffrey at the top. And this is really good training data uh, for the machine learning algorithm to learn off of in order to make predictions for next year. And my initial thought was I was going to look at each player's 2018 season and see how that could be used to predict 2019. Uh, for each row in this table, the program finds a player, then sees that there's a hyperlink to their player page, and it goes and checks them out. And then it goes and looks at their career uh, by season, which is down here for Christian McCaffrey. So he's played three seasons. So as it does is it, uh, it iterates through Christian McCaffrey's career recursively, and um, it continues evaluating how he's performed in every season in which there was at least one prior season to learn off of. So it keeps going until there's only two seasons left. So in order to be using the training data, you have to have played at least two seasons or more. Example, we Saquon Barkley has played two seasons, so he gets used in the training data once. Christian McCaffrey has uh, three seasons, so he's in the training data twice, and so on and so on. It calculates how many points Christian McCaffrey scored in 2019. And then uh, it looks back at 2018 2017 and says, okay, he scored this many points in 2019, but before 2019, he had a career average for each of these stats, and he also had a number for each of these stats in the season immediately prior to 2019. So for Christian McCaffrey, for looking at 2019, you know, whatever he scored in 2019, it was 450 points or something in PPR. His immediately prior season was 2018, so he did, you know, this in 2018. He had a career average before 2019, and that career average is 2017 and 2018 averaged. Then he has the immediately prior season, 2018, and that's all used to predict 2019. Once it's done that for 2019, it kicks 2019 out of the table, and then it goes down to 2017 and 2018. As long as there's still two rows left in the table, it keeps doing this and keeps knocking the last row off and keep, keeps going. So here, it calculates how many points Christian McCaffrey scored in 2018, and then it uses the prior seasons as the uh, training data. So here for 2017, because this is the only season remaining prior to the one we're trying to learn off of, his career average and his prior season are going to have the exact same stats. Because after completing one season in 2017, his 2017 stats were his career average. He goes through these players, and it recursively keeps going through their seasons and including them in the training data for however many seasons they've acquired minus one. So Michael Thomas is going to have three entries in the training data. One for how 2016 predicted 2017. One for how 16 and 17 predicted 18. One for how 16, 17, and 18 predicted 19. This is the uh, data fetcher. It's going to fetch the data from football reference and then parse through it all and prepare it for the machine learning. I'm just going to run through this and show you what it looks like and I'll fast forward through this in the video. And again, this is PPR format. So it takes like a second or two to grab each player. It just visits each player's page and then you know fetches their data throughout their whole career. If we look at the all the fetch training data, here's what we're gonna see. So all right. If you look here uh, in training data, there's always one less entry for each player than the number of seasons they've played. So Christian McCaffrey has played three seasons, so he's got two entries in the training data. So this actual score, uh, this is PBR format by the way, but this actual score is the top, it'll be 2019. So for the top of each player, this is 2019, this is 2019, this is 2019. This is how many points Christian McCaffrey scored in 2019. The next, you know, X number of rows are Christian McCaffrey's career average prior to 2019. And this one is his uh, score in 2018. And then here is his career average prior to 2018, which is for Christian McCaffrey just going to be 2017 because he's a third year player. So, you know, next number of columns, we've got uh, the career averages. And then once we get over here, back to scrimmage yards again, this is the uh, immediately preceding season. So this is 2019. Before 2019, 
This was uh, Christian McCaffrey's career average. And then in the season immediately before 2019, which is 2018, this was Christian McCaffrey's season average. And this is all used in the trading data to weight how much do you weight uh, you know, a player's last season, how much do you weight their career overall. And you know, if you do last season, it's obviously going to favor some players over others, whereas career, it'll favor some players who've had really good careers like Adrian Peterson. The algorithm figures out how much it wants to weight each thing because it uses uh, last one regularization to figure out which which factors are the most valuable. And if you see, you know, it goes through all the players for however many years are in their career in order to make determinations and learn from them. And I think the player with the most seasons in here is Ben Watson. Ben Watson's been in the league a long time, but like for Ben Watson, he's got all these seasons where prior to the season he had a certain career average and a certain uh, you know season immediately prior. So the machine figures out how much each is worth, whether the career is more important than the, uh, the season prior. Because you could have a really good last season, like Juju Smith-Schuster, and then not have as good of a follow-up season. You could also have a really good career and not have a good follow-up season. You know, everything gets taken into account and weighted accordingly. And that's one of the things I like about this is that it doesn't have the human bias that, you know, experts have. Because humans have to decide, you know, especially in weekly projections, how much do you take the season average into account versus what they did in the, you know, the week that just happened. Someone can score, you know, one point a week and then all of a sudden they score 35. Do you, do you go off of what they just did or do you do off of what they've been doing? Um, so for this, it, it looks at both of them and then weights them accordingly. It also makes um, a testing data set. And this is a testing data set for 2020. So if we look here, uh, this is each player who had at least one touch in 2019. And this is what their career averages were, including 2019, and what their immediate prior season in 2020, which would be 2019, what, they did in tw what they've done in their career, including 2019, and what they did um, in just 2019 alone. And this is used uh, to make next year's predictions. And uh, one thing that's not going to be in here, uh, there are no rookies for next season in here yet because they haven't even been drafted yet. But on top of that, I'm going to try to do some sort of data that uses their college stats to predict what they'll do their rookie year. But this is just players who played in you know 2019 already. I'm just going to take these CSV files and uh, put them here. And then we're going to run this code. Which is going to learn off of the training data and then make predictions on the testing data. All right, so uh, here is the uh, predictions. This is for PPR format. So what we see is we get all the predictions, you know, for each player. It's so actually when I took this into a Google Doc. Uh, just to make it a little easier to see. And this is uh, all the players for 2020 sorted by their projections. And this is PPR format. Now, when I first saw these, I thought that these, uh, <laughs> Antonio Brown, this is probably not going to happen. Um, when I first saw these projections, I kind of thought they were a little low. And I was trying to figure out if there was a bug somewhere that was making these projections low. And then I realized that this is not what the machine thinks would happen if each of these players was healthy and played a full season next year. This is what the machine thinks will happen next year in reality. And that includes the chance that these players could get injured and miss games. Um, so they lose part of their expected value just based off the possibility of injury because in the training data there are players who have really good careers and really good last seasons and then they get injured and they don't score very many points. So these numbers are a little low, but it's taking injury into account. It's, it's saying we're projecting this player to score this many points, and part of the reason it's this and not higher is because there's a possibility that they could get injured and miss time. Just looking at the rankings a little bit, I'll try to go a little slower. I'm going to post these on my website if anyone wants to take a closer look at them. No, that wasn't very slow. Okay, we go to the bottom. Um, Lee Smith is Mr. Irrelevant at the bottom here. One thing I was going to mention is 
I went ahead and retroactively um, ran this program to make 2019 predictions and then compared them to what actually happened in 2019. Uh, let's go ahead and sort this by the projections. So all of these projections were made without using any data from 2019. This is all using seasons 2018 and prior. So this is, had the machine been run last year based off of, before the 2019 season, based off of everything that had happened in the past, this is what it would have said for 2019. And then I went ahead and tracked the error. So in PPR, I actually had Julio Jones as the player projected to score the most points, followed by Saquon, Le'Veon Bell, Hill, McCaffrey was at you know number five, Gurley, Odell Beckham, you know. So anyways, the average error when you take the PPR, you know, script and you check the variance, the average error is 47.1.11. So if you if I ran it retroactively on 2019, it was off for each player on on an average 47 points. This is the absolute value of the error. So not minus 47 or plus 47, but plus or minus 47. So typically, whatever these projections are, on average, the players are going to deviate from them about plus or minus 47. Now the median was a little lower. It's 37. So that means about 50% of players are going to score within plus or minus 37 points of where I have them at. But the other 50% are not going to be within that range. Uh, if you go ahead and look at which were the most accurate predictions retroactively, Willie Sneed, there's some, uh, DeAndre Hopkins is a, one of the high ADP players. You know, some of these are, are pretty close, but I, I kind of might chalk that up to coincidence. Um, who knows, you know, we'll find out.